Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson three, analyzing a verbal description. Classwork, read the example problems below and discuss a problem solving strategy with a partner or a small group. So assuming you have done that, here's example one. Gregory plans to purchase a video game player. He has $500 in his savings account and plans to save $20 per week. So this is our constant and this is our rate of change, $20 per week from his allowance until he has enough money to buy the player. Wow, he gets more than $20 per week for his allowance. Must be nice. He needs to figure out how long it will take. What type of function should he use to model this problem? Justify your answer mathematically. Okay, so if I consider that he plans to purchase a video game player, and I'll call that V, and he has $500 that he's going to pay for that video game player plus $20 per, meaning multiply, week. So it'd be V equals 500 plus 20W. He needs to figure out how long it will take, what type of function should be used to model this problem. Okay, so they did not tell us how much the video game player is. All they told us was he had 500 bucks and he's going to save $20 per week to go towards that video game player. So it's obviously going to be more than $520 or they would not have this problem. He'd just go pay for it now. So, there's the equation. So I can put this in function notation. F of W, a function with respect to number of weeks, equals, and then if I put it in standard form, the coefficient times the variable goes first, and then the constant, which is our y-intercept in this case, what we started at is 500. So if the function is graphed, the slope of the line, which is our rate of change, is 20 to reflect the constant rate of $20 per week and the y-intercept, $500, is our initial amount. Okay, number two says, one of the highlights in a car show event is a car driving up a ramp flying over approximately five cars placed end to end. The ramp is eight feet at its highest point. Okay, so we have this ramp. Okay, we have this ramp. And at this point here, it is eight feet. So the car is driving up, it's jumping, and there are five cars, and he wants to jump over. So what does that shape look like? I would say it looked like a parabola. So let me get all this out of the way. Okay, so it's at 88 feet per second. So 8 feet at the highest point of the ramp, upward speed of 88 feet per second before it leaves the top of the ramp. What type of function can be modeled? The height h in feet of the car. So that would be h of t based on time. The height with respect to time equals after leaving the end of the ramp, justify your answer mathematically. Okay, so this needs a little bit of thought. Uh, it look, Okay, the car is going like this. So if I think that that's a quadratic, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so y equals. And if it's opening like this and it has a maximum height, then this is a negative. And we're talking about gravity, so if you remember the physics portion of this course, and it's negative 16 times the time squared, plus the speed would be your linear portion, 88 feet per second, which would be 88 feet per second times time, plus, and the height when the car takes off of the ramp is eight. So we have h of t equals negative 16 t squared, that's our gravitational pull, plus 88 times time, which is our feet per second, plus the height we left the ground, or the ramp, which was eight feet. 
Okay, example three. Margie got $1,000 from her grandmother to start her college fund. She is opening a new savings account and finds out that her bank offers a 2% annual interest rate compounded monthly. Okay, 2% monthly. What type of function would best represent the amount of money in Margie's account? Justify your answer mathematically. Okay, so this is a growth rate problem and it's interest compounding on top of interest. So we know that it grows gradually at the beginning, but then it would increase in speed over time. And that is an exponential function. So we want a function in terms of some variable X and that is going to equal A times B to the power of X. X would be our time. A would be our initial investment. And B is the expression, if you remember from previous lessons, to represent interest, we take the total 100% plus the interest rate divided by N. That's the compounded interest formula. Let me review that. Interest formula is P of T equals the initial amount P sub zero times the interest rate, which is one plus R over N to the power of N times T. N being the number of number of um, time, how many months in this case. Okay, so let's use, hello, I chose the eraser. Let's choose a function value. Let's say A of N equals our initial amount is A. P of zero is A. She had a thousand dollars from her grandmother, so that's one thousand times one plus the interest rate is two percent, which is zero point zero two divided by N, which is monthly. Well, how many months in a year? That's twelve to the power of N, which is twelve times our time, which is T. So this would be actually a sub 12 in this case for one year, to find out one year. So we don't know how long Margie plans to leave the money in her account, so we do not know what the value of T is yet. If we knew that she was going to leave it in her uh, account for 10 years, then we would know what T is. But in this case, all we know is the initial amount and the interest rate and the compounding periods per year. So there's our formula. Okay, now it's an exercise after those three examples. Now try these on your own, pause the video, come back, see how you did. And number one says, city workers recorded the number of squirrels in a park over a period of time. At the first count, there were 15 pairs of males and, and female squirrels, 30 squirrels total. After six months, the city workers recorded a total of 60 squirrels, and after a year, there were 120. Okay, so what type of function can best model the population of squirrels recorded over the period of time, assuming the same growth rate at, at, and that no squirrels died? All right, so population, that is definitely going to be exponential. That's an exponential growth. B, write a function that represents the population of squirrels recorded over X number of years and explain how you determined your function. So we get, again are going to use the function of an exponential, which is A times B to the X. Why did I put a two? I have no idea. A times B to the X. So by figuring out that this is a doubling exponential problem, the number of squirrels doubled every six months. So this function would then be f of x equals, well, what was our initial squirrel population for starters? That is our a, and we started out with 15 pairs or 30 squirrels, so that's going to be 30. And we are going to have our b as 2 because it's doubling. And 
it's going to be the, to the power of 2 times x. Okay, so this 2 represents pairs of squirrels, and this 2 represents doubling the number of periods of time. All right, number 2. A rectangular photograph measuring 8 inches by 10 inches. So we have a rectangle. Let's just draw a picture. Okay. And that is going to be 8 by 10 inches. Surrounded, okay, is, in a, is, is, wait, a rectangular photograph measuring 8 inches by 10 inches is surrounded by a frame with a uniform width x. So then we're going to come out a certain distance and have a frame. Okay, so here's our frame. A uniform distance. This one's a little bit off, but that's close enough. Okay. So that's going to have a width of x. So we went from 8 to x. What type of function can best represent the area of the picture and the frame in terms of x, the unknown frame width? Explain mathematically how you know. Okay, this can be represented by a quadratic function because this is an area problem where the product of two linear measurements results in a quadratic. So this is quadratic. Because we're squaring, and every time we increase our base, then the, the frame would get that much bigger. So B says to write an equation in standard form representing the area of the picture and the frame and explain how you arrived at your equation. So the dimensions of the picture were 8 by 10. The initial dimensions were 8 by 10. Taking into consideration the width of the frame, we have to add 2x to both the width and the length of the picture. Okay, so... What they're saying is, I mislabeled this, it's not side length x. It says, in surrounded by a frame with a uniform, the width of the frame is a uniform distance of x. So this side 10 right here is 10. And if this little piece here is x and that's x, that would be 2x plus 10. And if this is a distance of 8 from here to here, and this is a distance of x by x. This would be 8 plus 2x. Okay, so this is x and this is x. It would be 8 plus 2x. This x here and this x here plus this 8 is 8 plus 2x by 10 plus 2x, or 2x plus 10. So the area in terms of x equals 8 plus those two x's times this distance, which is 10 plus 2x. So the area of the picture frame is that. Now if I do FOIL here, I get a of x equals 8 times 10, 8 times 2x, 2x times 10, and 2x times 2x. Put this in standard form, and I get a, x equals, a of x equals 4x squared plus, combine your middle terms, 36x plus 80. Number three says a ball is tossed up in the air at an initial rate of 50 feet per second from five feet off the ground. So we, we are five feet off the ground. It's a person five feet tall tossing a ball up in the air, and that's what the ball does. So that is definitely quadratic. Okay, so I already answered that. Quadratic. 
What type of function models the height h and feet of the ball after t seconds? Explain what is happening to the height of the ball as it travels over a period of time t seconds. Okay, so the initial height of the ball is 5 feet. It travels upward with an initial velocity of 50 feet per second. As time increases, the ball continues to travel upward with the force of gravity slowing it down until it reaches the maximum height and then falls back to the ground. C says, what function models the height h in feet of the ball over a period of time in t seconds? Okay, so we want a function h of t, height with respect to time, h of t, height with respect to time. We know that it's a parabola, the ball is doing this. It is a parabola, so a is negative. And that's standard form of a quadratic. So h of t equals gravity is negative 16 t squared. These should be t's, by the way. Negative 16 t squared plus 50 feet per second is our linear term. So that'd be 50 t plus our starting point of 5 feet off the ground. Number four, a population of insects is known to triple in size every month. At the beginning of a scientific research project, there were 200 insects. That is my A. What type of function models the population of insects after T years? Okay, that is going to be exponential. B says write the function that models the population of growth of insects after t years. So we know that population is going to equal the initial population or p sub 0 times 1 plus the rate to the power of n times t. So using the general form for the exponential growth, we know that our b equals 3, that is tripling. Our a equals 200, that is our initial at the beginning. And there are, it's month, every month, so our growth cycle is n. Our n equals our growth cycle is every month, and there are 12 months per year. And now we put this together. So P of T is going to equal our initial value, A, which is 200 right here, times 1 plus our rate, triple in size every month, so to get to 3, we have to, if B is 3, then it's 1 plus 2. So our R is 2. To get our 3 as our B inside here, we're given 1 plus R, so our R is 2, increasing by 2 to triple. We start with 1, and then we'd end up with 3. We're adding 2 to that 1 to the power of N, which is 12, times some time, number of years. So R is a growth rate of 200%. Tripling is 200%. So that's our R, 200%. And N equals 12. So P of T is going to equal 200 times 3 to the 12 T. Okay, that is the end of lesson 3. Review this lesson summary and go to your problem set.